Hey, Bill here with 30 Minute Woodshop. Thanks for joining. Today, we're going to show you how to make a really cool epoxy river coasters. We're going to take this poplar board, half inch thick, about a 3 16 inch river in it, trench, and we're going to pour in some epoxy mixed with some blue and white uh, mica powder. So keep watching, we'll show you how to do all that. Our first order of business is to do some layout work. I'm striking a line here at about one inch from the end. This just tells me where my river is going to end. Um, I want to have my all right, three and five eighths wide. I want square coasters, so these are going to be about I'm marking three and a quarter because I'm including the uh, thickness of the blade when I cut. Okay, so that's six of them. I'll give myself another inch over here. Gives me a little bit, a little bit extra. Now, think about a river. Let me straight these all the way across while I'm talking. When you think about a river, a river just meanders along. So it kind of, kind of wanders. And the reason I want to see where these coasters are is I want to see what kind of curvature is going to fall uh, within each one of these. Okay, now I got it. So the idea is to draw in some type of a curvature. So if you think about a way a stream wanders, and I want some curvature in both of these, not just a simple curve, but maybe a compound curve, so, to start here, I'm just going to draw something in. And you know, the great thing about this is that I may or may not follow this line. But you can see, compound, it starts here, goes over, double curve here, one curve, curving back, another curve. So this should be kind of cool. Um, I think it'll work out. Next thing I gotta do is grab a router. I'm gonna use a, using a compact router, uh, DeWalt, with a straight bit in it, and I'm gonna freehand this thing, so I'll have to button it down. I have a set of brass setup blocks here. I've used to set the cutter depth to 3 16 of an inch. That should be plenty to hold all the epoxy I need to make a nice river. So I'm gonna freehand this out starting here carry it all the way through, generally following the line that I put in. I'll have stops effectively at each end to keep the uh, epoxy from running out. And uh, as soon as I get this done, we'll clean it up a little bit and we'll be ready to uh, go ahead and fix some epoxy. So like always, safety gear is important. Safety glasses, be sure you have on hearing protection. Marine Corps artillery, so I still have hearing problems. Tiny makes a noise. Now, if you notice, I wait until the router's completely stopped before I move it, because otherwise, I'll 
almost always you'll get some weird little divot. Yeah, there it is. And you can see that nice little river in there. Each piece has some little river section. And like any river, there's even a few little woojis in it. So it's not super, super smooth. So it should be good. Now I need to go make some uh, epoxy. So one thing to do before we uh, start pouring is to sand off the little burrs and fur that's left over from the uh, routing operation. It usually isn't too much. But you don't want those little pieces caught in the uh, epoxy. So there you have it. Not too much. This is a little 220 sandpaper. Well used. Now we mix up our epoxy. This stuff mixes a 50-50. It's a uh, artist resin, so it's a, for a thin pour. And uh, we're within the operating temperature, which is 70 to 85 degrees, so we're good here. It's finally reached summer here in Michigan, so we'll pour some 50-50. dab of colored powder. So, what do y'all think? Blue or purple? French Blue by Rolio. Wow, look at this. I don't know if I have enough. Let's give it a try. Wow, sheer luck that I uh, managed to uh, pull this off.
just barely made it, let me tell you. <laughs> Going to use an extra tenth of an ounce maybe. It's a slightly subsurface, but that's not a problem. Uh, we'll get done sanding it out. It'll look just fine. So you can kind of see how that looks real quick. Can't hold that too too far that way. Uh, this is a, a art pour, so it sets a little faster. Um, it's thin, so it's not a uh, not made for deep pours, and it should go pretty quick. Uh, come, I'll come back in about a half an hour and maybe uh, take a look at it. I do need one thing, which is the do you need to fire up the bubbles on top? And there they go. Good. So we'll let this sit for a couple hours, and uh, once it sets up, we'll come back to it. Uh, we'll do some scraping and sanding, and uh, hey, you should be good to go. Okay, the epoxy's cured. Make a few more passes. I've already done several passes to, uh, with a hand plane to bring down the, uh, the excess material. And it's flushed up pretty well. Now I'm going to use a scraper for a final, kind of a final finish. If you don't have a hand scraper or a card scraper, I suggest you actually get one, learn how to use it, learn how to sharpen it. There's a link to my video on card scrapers down in the bottom. Uh, take a quick look. It takes about a minute and a half, two minutes to sharpen, sharpen one of these things, which learning how to use it is pretty easy. And it's a problem solver in your shop. So there we go. Now all we gotta do, a little bit of sanding. So, on a sanding. So for sanding, I'm starting with a 220, so I've hit this with my card scraper, it's pretty smooth. What I want to start doing is getting the uh, epoxy prep. Uh, I'll be doing 220, 320, 400, and I think I have some 600 too, all in my orbital sander. So keep watching. done just to give you a real quick read of how this is going to look. I don't know if you can see that but boy that tell you what that looks really nice. Now there are a few very tiny tiny pinprick voids in this. Once you hit it with a uh, at the moment. But once you hit it with a uh, varnish most of those will be unseen. If you do have anything really big you may have to dig it out uh, with a toothpick, uh, blow it out with a uh, uh, blow gun, air blower and uh, that will take care of it. But you can see how you can see how that looks. This is gonna be really nice once I put the finish on it. So the next step, we're gonna start cutting out the chunks. I've installed a stop block here at three and nine sixteenths of an inch from the blade. So it's gonna make my cuts very repeatable and very easy. Uh, I've already trimmed off the end of this just to give me a flat spot and a spot where my river actually starts. Let's get going. Make some noise. So, we've cut out six coasters using the stop block. They're all identical. Uh, I did cut out a seventh piece. This is for the coaster corral. And all that's going to be is a place to stick these There'll be four corners sticking up on it, drop them in, put it on the table, they don't get lost. Show you how to make that toward the end. Okay, cutting's done. All I'm doing now is doing a little edge treatment here, which is a little round over, and sanding the edges. Um, you have a couple choices. You can put any kind of edge treatment on this that you want. If 
you just want to have a router table or something, you can put on, say, a 45 or a Roman OG or even a, a just a round over. And uh, those are all pretty cool. I want these to be a little more square. So all I'm doing is <clears throat> sanding the edges and just breaking that corner down to about a sixteenth of an inch radius, roughly. Not much, but just to soften it so it feels good when you pick it up. Now let's go finish. For finish, all I'm putting on is some fast drying mid wax polyurethane. Not worry too much about this first coat. I'm going to put uh, at least three coats on. And I am doing all sides and edges. Well, you can really see that stuff pop. sand it and put a couple more coats on and the coasters themselves will be done. Next we have to make the coaster corral. Well our coaster project is in the home stretch. Finishes on. These are looking really good. I have burned my name in the back. I haven't done that yet but let's move on to the coaster corral. I need some place to keep these things in one spot whenever we're not using them. So what I'm going to do basically is take this which is a one of the ones that doesn't have any river in it, same size, and I'm going to take this spare piece of wood I have and cut out two pieces of half inch and two pieces that are one inch wide, and I'm basically going to make L corners here so you can just drop them in and they'll stay there. So keep watching. Okay, I know a lot of folks out there who hate radial arm saws. Personally, I love them. I love them for this reason. I can see the work. I can see the track of the saw. I know exactly what's happening. What I've done here is I've taken these, lined up this edge by, by feel. Your finger can feel about three thousandths of an inch, sometimes even a le little less. So these are all definitely on line. And now all I'm going to do is make one cut. It'll cut all four pieces exactly the same length. Let's make some noise. Okay, normally I recommend sandy before you cut for small pieces like this, but uh, these are just the right size to do a quick surface sanding on a 220 grit sandpaper. In a little bit of work, I'll be ready to install. So I'm using CA glue to glue these pieces together. There's no load on these, and CA glue does a phenomenal job. I'm using a thick cyanoacrylate glue, just a real thin, uh, thin line of it. You actually have a fair amount of work time with this stuff, more than you think. The uh, instant part really isn't all that instant. It's only instant if you use activator. Even that is not. mismatch. It's going to be so small that it's very easy to sand out right here. And take care of that. But as you can see, there's, there's no mismatch at all in that. That's, that's perfect. So you got to hold it for about 30 seconds, 40 seconds. And uh, when you're done, let it sit for about uh, 10 minutes just to make sure that it's uh, fully cured and you're ready to go. What we'll do is we'll do a little more sanding on these, make sure they're evened up, tops and bottoms and edges, and then uh, we'll assemble it to the base. Like every good project, the moment of truth. Let's see if these things fit. Now, all 
all I got to do, one more coat of finish on top of these. I wanted to have three coats of polyurethane to protect them from water. And then I'm going to use this boiled linseed oil on this piece because it's not being exposed to water. And I like the way the lin boiled linseed oil looks. It is a much thinner finish uh, and not quite as durable, to be honest. But again, you're not really holding on to this very much. It sits in the corner. These things get dropped in, pulled out. Once I put the linseed oil on and then I wax it, it'll be great. Okay, real quick, wipe on, wipe off of uh, ELO. And I'll actually do this for two coats. So I want to give it some level of protection. And there we go. absorbs it really quick. And the dry time is fairly short for this stuff. And that looks really nice. But again, it's a very thin finish. So we'll let it uh, dry up and I'll put another coat on. By that time, I think the um, additional coat of polyurethane on the coasters will be dry. And uh, Project's done, finish is dry, I have three coats of polyurethane on the coasters which will protect it against all manner of water and coffee and whatnot. Uh, these will last a pretty long time. I put two coats of uh, BLO on the uh, carrier, uh, which is perfect for that because it's not going to see a lot of moving or handling. Uh, I had a lot of fun making these. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Uh, a couple firsts here for me. One was an uh, overport. Let me show you this. I've made these several times, but so you see that light, I don't know if you can see the sparkles in that, but that light center, this is the second pour. I used a small amount of white in another pour of epoxy in about two hours. I dropped it over top and then kind of mixed it in. And it's a really nice sparkle to it. I'm really impressed with how that is. It looks really cool. Um, Anyway, easy project, great introduction to uh, pouring epoxy, so doesn't cost a lot. You can get into this pretty fast and easy using an art uh, epoxy rather than using the deep pour. Uh, cure time is only like 24 to 48 hours instead of, you know, five to seven days for the deep pour. Uh, this is a nice little uh, project to give away. By the way, if you look at Etsy, these things run anywhere from $35 to $125 a set. So if you want a great way to make some extra money, make start churning these puppies out. Uh, but great, great thing to do, a lot of fun, short, fast, quick, cheap, easy to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can get your kids involved in doing some of this, especially pouring the epoxies because they get, get a kick out of doing that. And uh, hey. I'll put a close-up of, of this uh, river in my blog, and speaking of which, that will be in a link in the bottom. And also I have links for the materials I use, the epoxies and whatnot, uh, and the mica powder, uh, as well as the tools that I use. And uh, hey, explore those links, because uh, you may find them interesting, you may find something useful there. If you do choose to do this project, please do me a favor and post something on it. I'd love to see what you're working on. Even if it's not this project, guys, I'd love to see whatever projects you're working on. There's so many great makers out there doing great things, you know, in small batches. And uh, we're not doing it to sell. We're doing it simply because we like doing this kind of stuff. So definitely share that with me. I, I definitely appreciate it. Um, hey, on that note, folks, I hope you got something out of this. If you did, hit like and subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell so you can be notified of my next uh, video coming up. And uh, on that note, until next time, good me.